Hey guys, it is Chainsaw Gears 12 here with my first episode of Review Wednesday. And like I told you guys last week, I'm doing Metallica's Garage Inc. And so there, there's a huge long list. There's, it's a two disc album. The first disc is w what they recorded in the studio in 1998. And the second disc concludes of all the other covers they've done and mashed them all together on one disc. And so... I'm gonna try to get these songs best that I can. I'm not. I'm not gonna try to spend a lot of time on each of them. I'm gonna get some really a few key points and what makes Metallica make it a different. I'm just gonna try to get through this because this video is gonna be really long. I do not want it to be really long. So the length, I can't help it if it gets like over 10 minutes, 13, 14 minutes, like my load and reload. But it's re reviews, of course. So I'm gonna try to get through them as fast as I can. Free speech for the dumb. Starting off with disc one, of course. Gonna go all the way through. Free speech for the dumb. A unique song Metallica picked. Uh, only has two words, so it just sounds, I, I don't know, it, it's heavy, it's Metallica made it heavier, and I, I feel like that in my mind, it was a weird song to pick to start off this um, this cover album, it was really weird, it's different, well Metallica is, they, they like different, so, you know, that's all for them, but great song, pretty good, and like I said, a unique song to start off the album. Not my pick, but that's the way they picked it. It's Electric from Diamond Head. They finally played this song live at one of the, the 30th anniversary shows with the actual Sean Harrison and Brian Tatler who wrote the song in 1980. And they finally played it live and it was great. It sounded good. And the album version sounds great too. And you know, you can tell James on the um, album version, it sounds, he, he's really getting into it. And he really enjoys it. And that's what really, and the band just sounds great on it. Just sounds great. Sabra Cadabra, and also a little bit of National Acrobat from Black Sabbath. And it was unique to hear James do a Black Sabbath song. He's done, they've done Iron Man live, but to hear the band play a Black Sabbath song, like a pioneer metal band, Black Sabbath, being covered by one of the biggest metal bands, like in the world or right now or whenever. Like, to hear a Metallica song do a Black Sabbath song, it's really unique to hear those two being pushed together. It's really unique and it's really great on the album. Turn the page. Probably one of the best covers songs they've done, or in my opinion, at least one of the best. A lot of people really enjoy it. When they play it live, it sounds great. I heard it live at my show in 2009. There's a review up for that. And it, it sounded great. It sounded just like the album. It kind of shocked me how close it sounded to the album when they actually played it on the album. It sounded so close, the live version did. And they heavied it up, and you can tell James was really getting into it and really enjoyed playing that song. And Got a hand to him. He did a great vocal performance, and the rest of the band did it great. It was really great sounding. I really loved it. Die, Die, My Darling. Misfits. Um, I love Metallica's version. Don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to dismiss Misfits. When I hear the Metallica version of Die, Die, My Darling and the two others, which are coming up soon, it's like when I hear Metallica do Misfits song, in my opinion, sorry, Misfits fan, sorry, Metallica version's better. My opinion... I just love their version of it. They made it more modern. They took a song that they really enjoyed and basically made it theirs. And I just can't help. I'm sorry. You know, they do respect Glenn Danzig. They really respect the Misfits, but they took songs and really made them sound better and sound, you know, more heavy. And that's what I really enjoy. So Die Die My Darling is a great song and great for James' vocals. It really was. Lover Man. This song sounds so dark. It sounds so... You know, James really made this sound just like a creepy song. And I was like, wow, listening, you know, re putting on repeat and just listening to the vocals, I'm like, this sounds so, it's so different. And Metallica loves different. So they definitely went different when they did this song. It sounds so different and unique. And can't argue with that. Metallica, they're used to doing normal and they picked, not normal, they're used to doing different. Well, they're normal and different, but they're, they're used to having something different and creative. And they picked a really unique song. To really show that on the first disc for sure. Merciful Fate, the melody, as it's it, the melody includes Satan's Fall, Curse the Pharaohs, Corpse of Soul, End in the Coven, and Evil. And I, I, they love playing this live. They don't play it a lot, but they played it in 2008 when King Diamond came out when they were in uh, Texas. I can't remember what the festival's called. And then that's all the, they played Cyanide. It's the first time live too. But then they also did that, did this at the one of the 30 anniversary shows, I think the second night, and they actually had four out of the five original band members from Merciful Fate come on stage and they played the whole me melody. It was amazing. It really showed the respect they had. They got, they actually got Merciful Fate back together for this song live, and it's a really unique melody. They put five 
Merciful Fate songs into one big melody, and it sounds really great. And I love playing guitar in Madaka, totally unreveal. Irreveal. It's not even point. It's not the point, but Merciful Fate melody, great. It's really unique how they morphed five really good songs into one and made it Metallica sounding. Astronomy, Blue Oyster Cult, really, I. I don't know. It kind of throws me off when I first listen to it, but then as it keeps going, I love the ending especially. And it's really different. It's like, you're used to hearing Metallica do ballads and stuff like that, and you're used to hearing Metallica get heavy. But to hear them do a cover song that gets like heavy in parts, and mostly it's ballad and it sounds really mellow, it's really different. But Metallica pulled this off amazingly. I'm surprised they have not played this live. If they don't play this live before they retire, which... They will never retire. <laughs> um, then I'll be really disappointed because they really need to at least perform this at least once. At least once. Astronomy. Come on, Metallica. Come on. Whiskey in the Jar. This song is all over. It's it's folklore, Irish. You know, they, they inspired it by Thin Lizzy's version from 1973. But Metallica really made this really heavy and made it really catchy. And James plays the lead parts and it's really cool. And it's like listening to it. He's like he get, he's getting into it. He loves it, and that's awesome. And so they did that, and they only play this in uh, Dublin, in Ireland. I, I guess where if they ever go anywhere in Ireland, they pl they'll play it, but they only play it in Dublin. So I don't know. I, I wish they would play. It. They actually did play it outside of. They played it in the United States, and they did shows after Garage Inc. came out. Where they did all shows of all covers, but they really need to start playing this more in other places because everybody enjoys that song. It's not just the Irish people. Bring whiskey in the jar to America. Come on, or wherever you live, if you're watching this. Tuesday's gone. It includes a buttload of people. Buttload, buttload of people. Pepper Keenan, Jerry Cantrell, Sean Kenny, Big Jim Martin. John Popper, Gary Rosington, and Les Claypool. I hope I announced those correctly. So, formerly a Lynn Scannon song, and they just had a ball. They all had a ball playing this song. You can hear all these all these different guys playing this song, and they're really getting to it. James is great. Uh, Pepper Cannon's great. I don't know who else did vocals, but like I think all of them did vocals at some point during the chorus. Great song. Great Really enjoyable. Not going to stick much more on that. But Tuesday's gone. If you have not listened to it, go listen to Metallica's version and all those guys. It's a great, great version. Great. The more I see, unique. Um, they made it heavy. This song sounds like I've heard the original Discharge version, 1984. Hey, I like it. But the more I see, they made that song heavy. Metallica made it heavy. The Metallica made it sound like their own song, in a way. Like they're not trying to steal it. It just sounds way more heavy. And it's Metall and you know Metallica really enjoyed it, and especially James, his vocals get gritty and get aggressive in the song, and that's what I love to see. James getting aggressive. So here's this too. As I rush through that, I'm gonna rush through these again, because I don't want this video to be so big. But you're getting my point, and if you have a sp specific song that you want me to talk about more in a comment section below or message me, I'll give you more details of what I really thought. But I'm just trying to get this video out. I mean, I'm giving you the key points of what I really enjoyed. And there's, there's nothing really negative about this album. So the second disc, okay. Garage Days Revisited. This is the first five songs they put on the second disc. Helpless. Great song. Great. I love James' vocals on this. And this is, of course, re re recorded between Master Puppets and Justice For All because they got Jason Newstead in the band, so they made it different. But Helpless. Man, great song. Great feeling. Just loved the whole band. Kirk does amazing on the solo. James, great vocals. Lars, a lot of double bassing. And you can actually hear Jason in all these songs in the Garage Day Revisited. It's really great. The Small Hours, a un another unique, different type of song Metallica does. They made it, they made it heavy, and they made it sound really unique to listen to. It's really different. So go listen to The Small Hours. It's one of those songs I definitely recommend because a lot of people have not heard that. And if you haven't heard it, at least give it a listen. Hold on a second. <coughs> Too much talking. The Weight, great song. I love The Weight. It's you. Um. Well, what what I understand is. Uh, his vocals, James vocals, I'm not sure if he's trying to copy or trying to get that same feel as Killing Joke did in 1980, but the way his vocals sound so like there's an effect and it sounds like he's far away from the mic when he's doing it. I don't want, I didn't like that too much. But the guitar sounded great and I really loved you know, the way they put that song together and I like it when they play it live. So it's a great, great song. But his vocals just sound a little bit different. Sounds kind of weird, like an effect was put on it, but I don't know. Crash Course and Brain Surgery from Budgie. A really unique song. The intro sounds so weird, and Jason's bass is so loud, and that's what really catches you and pulls you in. Like, this sounds really good. This sounds like a, this is like, 
really unique to hear Metallica listen, but then it actually gets to the actual riff, and it's like, oh, this sounds heavy, and they make it heavy, of course, and that's what Metallica does. They like making stuff heavy, and that's what they do. Okay, Last Crest and Green Hell, and does the little parody of Iron Maiden's Run to the Hills, but regardless, Last Crest and Green Hell, back to the what I said earlier about Metallica covering Misfits and Glenn, Glenn, Glenn Danzig, whatever you say his name. Metallica makes them sound better. My opinion. I listen to Green Hill. I listen to Last Caress by Misfits. I just don't... I don't... I can't catch a feel for them. I don't know. Maybe it's because like, I heard Metallica's versions first. And it's like, I really love this. When I hear the actual versions, and you know, they're written a lot earlier, and they're recorded earlier, and the recording is not that good, and like it sounds different. It's not heavy. I just don't like it. I'm sorry. It's just not my... T it's not my thing. If I... Like I said, if I want to listen to Metallica do uh, Green Hell, I'm not going to go listen to the Misfits version. Instead, I want to listen to Metallica's version because they made it heavier and it sounds a lot better, in my opinion. So here also, 6 and 7. This is the Creeping Death B-Sides in 1984. And, this, and Cliff Burton were, was, both, was on both these songs. Am I Evil and Blitzkrieg. Am I Evil, classic. Metallica played a lot. Great. Uh, I love it. It sounds... Am I Evil sounds exactly like it would have... It, it sounds like exactly like it would have been put on Kill 'Em All, which it was... And I think in Japan, I think they put it on, uh, like, after after the Metal Militia. But Am I Evil sounds exactly like it would be on Kill 'Em All. So I love that song. It's great. I love the full version, especially. Blitzkrieg, again, another great song. Sounds I, lo I love the riffs on it. It's really catchy, and James really enjoys it. And they play it live, and James gets into it. The whole band, like, they just enjoy playing these covers. And Blitzkrieg is, n you know, no exception. So here are the B-sides and one-offs. And I'm not going to... I'm not going to really get into, like, you know, what they're from, but if you've heard Metallica play these live or you've heard them, you know, from the Garage Inc. or on YouTube, then you'd understand. Fred Fan from Budgie. Metallica love playing this. It's from the Eyes Beholder single. I guess I'll tell you where it's from. But Metallica, it's like, when they, the 1989 version when they did um, Seattle 1989 that's on Metallica uh, Binge and Purge, uh, the... Video version of 1989, I have the Beholder single. They played Bread Fan at the end of that set on that famous video everybody knows about when Metallica were at their prime at that time. And his vocals sounded so good. The band really enjoyed it. You know, Lars is playing it so much faster. And they're playing it fast and they're enjoying it. It's crazy. And that's great. Uh, the Prince, which is on from the Harvester of Sorrow single, which is from Diamond Head, another Diamond Head song. And. Metallica played this live at the Mexico 2009 DVD. It sounded really great, really good. And this version sounds great, too. Um, you know, just really, really, they changed up, make it heavier. And that's what I like. Metallica making these really good songs heavier and, like, sounds like they, Metallica wrote them. That's what I like. Stone Cold Crazy from the Inner Sandman single, which is Queen. And they love performing this live. They performed this live. Ever since they covered it, they kept performing it. I still do to this day. It's a great song. Stone Cold Crazy. Big props to Queen. Great cover. So What and Killing Time. Both from the Unforgiven single. And So What, everybody know, is the famous anti-Nowhere League song where it has a lot of inappropriate talking about you, you, having sex with animals and blah, blah, blah. And that's inappropriate. I shouldn't talk about that. But <laughs> So What is like, everybody wants to hear that song because it's so dirty and so wrong. And so, got to give props to Metallica for taking a leap of faith and loving the song when they first heard it. Like, hey, let's cover it. And they covered it, and they, they actually did it live in 2011. And I thought they stopped after 2008 because they didn't play it for, like, three years. And then at one of the shows, they actually got Animal, which is the lead singer of Anti Nowhere League, to sing So What at one of their 30th anniversary shows. So, I was like, oh, okay, well, they played it again. I guess that they might keep on playing it, hopefully. Biggest cross for the most dirty song I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> Killing Time, Sweet Savage. Metallica performed this song from time to time. They actually performed it with uh, Ray Holler, who actually re did the vocals for it. And uh, there's a video, if no one knows about, James Hetfield comes out on a Sweet Savage set and starts singing with the band, uh, singing Killing Time. And it was like, everybody's like, oh my god, James Hetfield, oh my god. People are like freaking out and comes out and sings. It's really unique. Uh, Killing Time, great song. I loved it. sounded just like it would have been on the Black Album. So What did too. And, you know, those two songs are great. And I'm really excited they actually pulled those off really, really well. So the last part, 13, 14, 15, 16 on the list, is from Hero of the Day B-Side from 1995 when Metallica did um, all these Motorhead songs that, I, that I'm about to say in, in, in a row, all in a row. 
of Lemmy Lemmy's from Motorhead 50th birthday. So they did Overkill, Damage Case, Stone Dead, Forever and Too Late, Too Late. And they did other songs. Then they did a couple more, maybe two more, I think, or three. And they're not all in this, but Overkill, Damage Case, Stone Dead, Forever and Too Late, Too Late. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give all four the basically the same thing. Metallica sounds great doing Motorhead songs, especially Overkill and Damage Case. But when they do Damage Case, they're usually with Lemmy when they do it. And then Too Late, Too Late is also with Lemmy because if he's around. So that's that. Stone Dead Forever. It's been performed once or twice. They did last time performed in 2009. It sounded great. And Overkill has performed numerous times throughout the years. And they did it for the Big Four show in 2011 in September at Yankee Stadium. So, like I said, repeat. Metallica does great doing Motorhead songs. Can't argue with that. And there was one guy I saw on YouTube posting like, Metallica can't do Motorhead songs, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, well, you're going to have to get over it because Metallica sounds great doing Motorhead songs. You have your opinion. I have mine. But that's that's it, really. In my opinion, Metallica does amazing Motorhead songs. And keep performing the Metallica. Keep doing it. Keep doing it well. So that is the review. And I, I'll probably give a re, I'll probably get a rating for all the songs. I didn't go through them. I'm sorry if I skipped any. Like if I didn't skip any, but if I said too much or this video is too long, I don't know how long it is. I'm still talking. But comment down below. Let me know what you think about the review. Let me know what it, like what your favorite songs are of, off of Garage Inc. If it's off the first disc or the second disc, whatever. Give me your opinions on some of the songs, like why you think your opinion's different than mine, like what if a song doesn't sound like how I'm hearing it, how you're hearing it, or whatever. And also comment down below, let me know what albums I should review next week and beyond, beyond, beyond. So do that, like the video, subscribe, and guys stick tuned for Friday for the 10th episode of Weekly Metal Topic.